sick and then we didn't end up having service, but the Lord was like, you know, you still preach it because it's really kind of setting us to preparing us for what's going to happen, not only for January, but in this new year. So I'm going to have a word of prayer and then we're going to jump right into the message. Amen? Amen? God, we thank you. We ask that you would open up our ears and help us to hear from you. Lord God, I stand, but it is your spirit that we want to hear from. So God, we ask that you just have your way in the midst of us. We're praying right now in the name of Jesus that you would give us clarity on our purpose. Give us clarity on where you want us to go. And help us, Lord God, to find the encouragement that we need so that we can be all that you've called us to be. Now, Holy Ghost, we just ask you to just come in this place and have your way. Glory, we thank you for you just showing up. We are glory carriers and we release the glory in this place. Father God, it has nothing to do with how many. It just has to do with you. Because Amen. you are here and we are willing to let you have your way. God, we extend it in expectation to see you touch us in areas that we need to be touched. We're looking to you to show up in things that we need you to just bother all in. Get all in our stuff. Get all in our faith. Get all in our situations and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. So I call this message the reveal. What are you saying in 2018? Well, first of all, you know, I'm going to look at this. This is going to be a little bit of a Sunday school lesson. I'm going to preach my way through it in the name of Jesus. Now, I have several scriptures we're going to go through, and that's a reason why I'm doing it, and so you'll understand. The first thing I want us to look at is we talk about what is what are we saying. we got to look and understand that what we say is important first and foremost because God set the precedent on showing us what is important. So first we want to look at some things that God said. I'm looking at Genesis 1, verses 2 and 4, 2 through 4, and it's on the screen if you don't have your words, so you can just follow. And it says, the earth was formless and void, or, or wasted and emptiness, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Um, the Spirit of God was moving, hovering, boarding over the face of the water, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, pleasing, useful, and he affirmed and sustained it. And God separated the light, distinguishing it from the darkness. God said, when God said, let there be light, what happened? There was light. And he separated that light from that darkness. And you know, when God wants to call light into our lives, he does just that. There's some situations in our lives that we need God to step in this year and say, Lord, let there be light in those situations. Because there's some darkness that I can't see, I don't understand, I'm not sure where I'm going and how I'm going to get there. But if you say, let there be light, then there will be light. Genesis 1 verses 6 and 7 says, And God said, There be an expansion of the sky in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters below the expanse from the waters above the expanse. And God made the expansions of the sky and separated the waters which were under the expansions from the waters which were above the expansion. And it was so, just as he commanded it. Again, God did what? He said, and when God said, it said, it was so. God decided that he needed to separate some things. He separated the heavens from the earth, the waters from the uh, above and the waters below. This year, God want to separate some stuff in your life. This is getting good to me. He want to separate some stuff in our life. It's some things that have been all together that God needs to separate because they have distinct purposes and distinct things they need to do. And he will say it and when he say it, it's so just as he commanded. Genesis 1 and 9 says, Then God said, Let the waters below the heaven be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Again, God said it. God said it was so. If you notice, every time that God said something, it was based on a void. It was based on something missing. It was based on what he had already determined what was going to be. And when he said it, then he cracked it up by making it so. Genesis 1, um, 1 11. So God said, let the earth sprout, tender vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit according to um, their kind whose seed is in them upon the earth. And it was so. Again, God saw that there was a need for vegetation. And I love this. He didn't plant. He, 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 you know, we often think, and 
you know, they got all these debates about how old stuff is. God bought this stuff, and when he said it, it was mature. Because right here, it said it was already ready to yield seed. So when God called it, it was mature. I'm just saying, in this year, God is getting ready to call us to some maturity. God is getting ready to do something in many of us this year that's calling us to a place of maturity spiritually and in what he has called us to do. And it's going to seem like it shouldn't be because we was just immature how we mature. But that's because God can do whatever he wants. And when God says so, it is so. Amen. Genesis 1.14 said, Then God said, Let there be a light bearers. The sun, the moon, the stars in the expansion of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be useful for signs and for marking seasons, days and years. And let them be useful as light in the expansions of heaven to provide light on the earth. And it was so just as he commanded. See, God, again, God said it. And it was so. He decided that he wanted to make some light bearers. Can I tell you this year that you and I have been called to be light bearers? We've been called to be those that are carrying the glory of God to a dying world, to a place where people can't see, people don't know, and if they, we don't do it, if we don't we don't do it, they won't we won't be useful. He's calling us to be useful as a sign. Why? As a sign of his goodness, as a sign of his glory, of a sign of the fact that we serve a mighty good God. Genesis 1, now these are a couple, it's 20, 24, 26, and 27. So I kind of jump with these. Then God said, let the water swarm and abundantly produce living creatures and let birds soar above the earth in the open expansion of the heaven." Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, crawling things and wild animals on the earth according to their kinds. And it was so. Then God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but a spiritual personality and moral likeness. So God created man in his own image, in the image and likeness of God. He created him male and female. He created them. What was my point for all that scripture? As I talk about what God is saying, we have to first understand that God is a God that speaks. His words has power. When he speaks a thing, it don't, it don't get to debate about it. It don't get to say, well, God said do. The, the earth didn't say, well, God called us to be formed, but we don't want to be formed round. We want to be square. It didn't get a chance to tell God, let's have a debate on what you told me to do. It just said when God, it had to do what God commanded. And when God commands something for us, it's time for us this year to stop debating with him on whether we're going to do what he say. It's time for us to do it. Say amen myself. He said it's time for us to do what he has commanded us to do. He said because it is so. And what I appreciate is this. God didn't just speak to man. He did a little something special. See, God spoke to everything else and it, it, it appeared. He spoke to man, but he also touched man because he reached down in the dirt put it in his hand, and he fashioned and formed man in his own image. Can I tell you something? God is calling us this year. He said, I'm calling you to walk up to some stuff that look dirty. I'm walking, calling you to call up to something that looks useless. Because dirt, I mean, he couldn't have picked nothing more useless than dirt. He picked dirt. It didn't say good, rich soil. It said dirt. What do you do with dirt? You don't even really use dirt. Dirt has nothing. Soil is different. At least with soil, it's got some richness. Dirt is kind of the leftover residue of stuff that had just fallen off. So he made us out of dirt, out of nothingness, with no value. But he said, I'm because what makes you valuable is the fact that I touched it. And so this year, I hear the Lord say that what we're going to have to do, we need to walk up to some folks that don't feel like they value. We need to walk up to some people who the world done told them, you nothing, you ain't going to never be nothing. Nothing, you ain't got nothing. You ain't gonna never have nothing. And we go and open our mouths and use the volume of the words and the power of the anointing on our words and begin to speak life over them. And guess what's gonna happen? God said it because he's just using us. It's God saying it and he will be so. And then we can't just say it, but he took the special attention with humankind and he touched. This year we need to be touching some folks. We need to be touching some lives. Who are you touching? 
Who have you made it up in your mind to touch? And maybe you don't know who to touch. Ask God, who's my assignment? Whose life do I need to make a difference? There's somebody that if I don't come by their way, they may stay dirt. If it's somebody that I don't come and speak life over them, they may never know that they can get up. They may never know that they can rise up. They may never know that they have value. But I need to be the one that speak over them in the name of Jesus. God said it. God said it. God said it. That's what he does. God says a thing and we have to believe it. But then God also, as I said, God, the whole point we're showing you about God is because now he wants us to speak. So what are the prophets saying about 2018? Well, I've heard several prophets speaking, and this is one of the things I heard. I heard Apostle John Archer say that 2018 is the year you can no longer stay small. And he said that, you know, he's he kind of funny. He has the driest humor, but he cracks his own self up. He said, you can't be Fred Flintstone in a Jetson world. What did he mean by that? This year, we got to let go of some old, outdated thinking about ourselves because it's not going to let you keep up with the fast-paced world that God got you in today. That blessed my soul right there. Because as many of us be walking around thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I don't have enough talent, I don't have enough money, I don't have this. We have this little, I can't and I don't have. And God is saying, that's an outdated way of thinking. I need you to let it go for the because that's small thinking. It's time to think big. Why? Because I got better for you this year. I got greater for this for you this year. But I just need you to change and shift your thinking and get to the world that I have for you and the place that I have for you. He said this is going to be a year of no lack. He gave Psalms 34 and 10 and he said the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. I don't know about you, but I'm seeking God because I don't want to lack in no area. And what I love about what God will do is when you think you don't have enough, all you got to do is ask him and he'll start to open doors that you didn't even know. First of all, you didn't know how to open them. You didn't even know how to find them. But God will bring the door to you. He will bring the answer to you so that you can get the things that you need. And he said that the Lord will teach us to prosper. Isaiah 48, 17 says, This is what the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, said. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, to benefit, who leads you in the way that you should go. See, if we're going to be able to do and prosper the way God wants us this year, it's time for us to stop relying on ourselves. He said, I am the one who will teach you. I'm the one that's going to lead you. So he this is so, so Apostle Eckhart said, this is the year to expect your cup to run over. And you know, the Lord showed me something really special about that scripture. You know, it says my cup runneth over. He said, but you can limit the size of your cup. See, you can come in there with a thimble size cup, and he said, and you're still overflowing. He said, oh, you can come in there with the biggest barrel, and he'll overflow it. And I asked him, well, how do you limit the cup? Your lack of faith limits how size of your cup? Your obedience limits your cup? I don't know about you. I ain't trying to go up in there with no thimble and asking him to overflow it. I'm going to find several buckets that it's going to take me in an army. I have to put them on a truck and grab them in. I'm like, Lord, can you just, that's all right. Don't even give me, just fill the ocean. That's my cup. Fill the oceans. Give me the oceans full. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Fill the oceans full of blessings for me. I'm not limited in what? I'm going to trust you. I'm going to have faith in you. And I ain't talking no snatch it, grab it, name it, claim it. And I ain't talking about that foolishness because you can claim all you want to. You can claim you a car sitting in a garage, but that ain't going to make you a car. I'm talking about trusting in the truth of God. Amen. And then I heard Dr. Matthew Stevenson said, this is the year of the, year of the open heaven. And God has taken us to the future, our future. And he said the future moves by keys and doors. Keys, you know, I couldn't get in this door without the key. I can't lock out stuff unless I have the key. And I needed a door. See, I needed a way to enter. I, didn't, I, you know, I, I needed an entryway. So keys open. They help us to bind and loose those things in our lives. Isaiah 22 and 22 says this. Then I will set on his shoulders the key of the house of David. When he opens, no one will shut. When he shuts, no one will open. Can I tell you, it's some stuff God is ready to open in our lives for us. And he said, when it's open, won't be closed. 
But when we shut some stuff, it won't be opened up. We And so that means I can see us, some of us at the door trying to snatch the open. Would you let go of the door now? He done told you that's closed. That's cut off. Stop trying to open up stuff that needs to stay closed. And see, and doors give you access. Thank you, Jesus. We, some of us need some access. We got a good idea. We got a good business plan. We got some things that we want to do for our future and our families, but we just need the access. God said, guess what? Got a door for you. Got a door for you. Revelations 3 and 8 says, I know your deeds. See, I have set before you an open door which no one is able to shut. For you have a little power and has kept my word and have not renounced or denied my name. And then I want to read Isaiah 45 and 8. This is the New Living Translation. It says, Open up, O heavens, and pour out your righteousness. Let the earth open wide so salvation and righteousness can sprout up together. And I, the Lord, created them. See, God is saying this, you have access. That's why the, the devil don't want you to know. And that's the way he get many of us. He have us thinking we like poor paupers. We beg and, you know, with our little cup, arms for the poor, arms for the poor. Well, you ain't begging God. You a son. You a daughter. And if he can get us to pick up an orphan spirit and feel like God don't love us, that we've been dropped. And he often does that based on our situations and circumstances we've gone through life. And we start to believe the lie where he says, well, God, if God really loves you, he would have let you go that way. If God really loved you, this wouldn't have happened or that wouldn't happen. But I just come to tell somebody today, it happened, but God kept you from it destroying you. That don't make you no less a son or a daughter because you went through stuff. Where in the word does it say we ain't going to go through stuff? That's just a lie. We need to stop telling the ch at the church. I'm just going to say that right now. That, we The church need to repent. Because we've been telling people like, oh, you're going to get saved and it's going to be like lollipops and you going off to candy land. This ain't no candy land Christianity. This ain't no place where you just get to have fun and we just skipping around. And, no, you have fun in the midst of the difficulty. You find joy when it ain't no joyful situation. That's why he said you give you peace that passes understanding. Who's supposed to be peaceful when people bugging you, trying to bother you, all in your face when really you want to knock them out. But that's because of who God is. It has nothing to do with your situation and your circumstance. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody needs to know that today. Who you are, the access you have is because of the father that you belong to. And then one more prophet was Prophet Donna Hall and she said, this is the year of double deeper. Thank you, G. Think about it. You're going deep, but you're going to double time it in the name of Jesus. She said, this is the year of the Holy Ghost advance. And we must be in pursuit because he wants to give us double the fruit in this year. She also said, this is also the year you got to discern who on the boat with you. You got to discern who you're partnering with. I said that earlier. God said this is the year of holy partnerships. So don't be talking to them folks on the phone when you got a great idea and you tell them how the Lord bless you. Well, that do sound all right, but I don't know. You might not want to do that because let me give you these five reasons why I think it's going to fail. You was all excited. Then you got the phone and be like, why am I depressed? Because you done talked to the wrong person. I just shared with this in ministry school. The Lord told me, don't be putting your mouth on stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you. Don't be talking about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with your advancement. So I was talking to a sister. She is a gossiper. And so she was trying to tell me about something that was going on with this church. And you know, sometimes we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I didn't care about hurting no feelings. I'm just be honest. So when she started talking, I was like, um, God told me not to put my mouth on nothing that didn't have nothing to do with me. I don't go to that church. I don't care what they're doing at that church. I'm not saying nothing. I don't know about you. I ain't getting no whooping. I didn't like whoopings when I was a kid. I don't want no whooping as no adult. I'm not saying nothing. It got real quiet. We started talking about when we was kids. See, you got to change the conversation. Because I'm not getting in trouble with myself. Because you know why God don't want us with that kind of stuff? Because it distracts us. It gets us off the line of where he wants us to be. And then I said the same thing this year, that this is the year God is wanting to reveal more of his glory. But he told us, we got to be willing to press into his presence. So it's all wonderful that the prophets are saying, you know, God is going to give it a double the blessing. He ain't saying he giving you no double the blessing. You sitting with your feet crossed, just looking. 
I'm just waiting for God. God, you coming? He's like, I'm here. Where you at? We got to press into his presence. And that means press past everything. That's why I told y'all in worship today. I'm like, look, I'm going to just be real honest. I don't care how crazy I look. Sometimes the little kids that come visit for the first time, they just be cracking up at me because I will dance and I, I don't know what I look like when I dance because I'm all legs, so it really don't matter. I'm going to knee all the way up to my chin. I just will jump. I don't care. Why? Because I have learned that in the times when I have worshipped the deepest is when I've got the biggest deliverances. And when I have worshipped the deepest is when I've got the greatest revelations. And see, I, I, you know, some people are so proud. Well, I'm the pastor. I can't tell you I need deliverance. If somebody tell you they don't need no deliverance, you just pick your finger up and tiptoe on out the church. Because if they don't need no deliverance, they either Jesus, but he ain't back yet, or they lying. So I'm going with number two, that they lying. See, I'm going to tell you, I need deliverance just like you need deliverance. I need healing just just like you need healing. And I have no problem about going for it. Because guess what? I can tell you how to get there because I was willing to go myself. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, amen. So I will dance and party like I am crazy. And I know I have come to the realization that I probably would not feel, I probably would be shunned in some of the circuits because I'm just a little too crazy about my worship. Because I ain't worshiping in the traditional church way. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm just crazy, but that's all right. But if that's the way you worship, then you worship what makes you feel good. In this house, you worship. If you want to run, you just get on. Just make sure you don't bump it enough. Just run all around. If you want to run, if you want to lay out, lay out. Somebody will cover you up. See, because this is about you getting what God has for you. We ain't trying to impress nobody. You impress yourself into depression. I ain't trying to oppress, depress you. Because you ain't going to like me tomorrow, no way. You know how people are flip-flop? They like you today, but they did it to Jesus. They was uh, Hosanna and then crucify him. Hello. They do the same thing to us. Amen? Amen. And so why is what we say important? Amos 3 and 7 says this. Surely the Lord does nothing without revealing his secrets, his plans of the judgment to come to his servant, the prophets. And I want to take this a step further. That yes, God reveals it to his prophets, but I believe that all of us can be prophetic even if we're not in the office of the prophet. What I mean by that is God can talk to you just like he can talk to me. And he will reveal to you what he wants to do in your life. There's not a Christian alive that should be talking about they don't know what to do. Because then if you tell me, well, I have no clue on what to do, and I'm going to tell you it's time to get on your face. It's time for you to lay before the Lord and begin to ask the Lord, God, I'm, I'm clueless about what I'm doing. I need wisdom. And I love the fact that he said he'll give it to us, and he's not going to throw us away because we need it, but he's going to give it to us. Now, I'm almost done. I'm going to tell you the reason why, because I'm going back. And look at how God was showing us what we say is important. And I'm looking at, at Adam. I'm going to Genesis 2. And I'm going to read verse 8 through 22. And then I'm going to tell you what the Lord showed me about that. And then I'll let y'all go on home. That's my husband's thing. I ain't going to keep y'all till 3 o'clock. Starting at verse 8. It says, Now the Lord God said, It is not good, beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. One who balances him, a counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground every animal of the field and every bird of the air. And he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. See, he, he was saying something. He, God wanted him to go, declare and decree something over these animals. And so whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. And the man gave names to all the livestock and the birds of the air and every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper that was suitable, a companion for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and clothed the flesh of that place. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made fashion formed into a woman. And he brought her to him and presented her, presented her to the man. Now, look, let me tell you what I saw in this scripture that blessed me. And, I, you know, I've read this many times, like many of you. But I want to talk to you for just a little bit about how what you say is important. It, it's interesting to me that God says there was not a helper for Adam. 
And in my thinking, soon as God said there's not a helper, it seemed like he would have created a helper, right? That's not what he did. It said he created all these other animals, and he brought them to Adam. And I love what it says, to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called these creatures, that was what they became. Go back to what I said in the beginning. When God said a thing, it was so. When he said this is going to be sky, land, water, it became what God said he was. When God said he was going to create the animals, he created the animals. Now, this is my thinking. Scripture don't say it, so just give me a little bit of leeway. I believe when God created the animals, he already knew the names of the animals. He just didn't call them. Why? Because he wanted to partner with man and let man be in on part of the name. And thank you, Jesus. I don't know about y'all, but that's just about my bread and me right. God is telling us this year, he, there's some stuff that is already named in heaven on our behalf. He's just waiting for you to align with him so he can partner it with you declaring it over yourself with you making a decree about what it is over yourself and I, I love the fact that he said he listened to hear he wanted to hear what he was going to call these things we don't see it in scripture but I also believe that in order for him to name these things God had to have put something in his spirit for him to name these things. That he had to say, okay, well that looks like that should be a butterfly. I believe the Holy Ghost somewhere was like, that's a butterfly. He said, oh yeah, that's a butterfly. So he named it a butterfly. God is saying that we need to begin to hear. He wants our hearing open this year so that we can hear the things that he is declaring over us so that we can partner with him and name correctly. Because he didn't name a snake a butterfly. He didn't name a giraffe a gorilla. He named them in a way that was according to what God said. And I think that he, as he taught him how to name stuff, God is trying to teach us through his word and through his spirit on how to name some stuff in our lives. See, there's some stuff in our lives that we just say it is an issue and God is saying, it's sin. So he said, you need to change the name because you're not naming right. Thank you, Jesus. He said, it's time to name some stuff right. Oh, you gotta, well, I just don't like her. God is saying, no, 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 I ain't just that you don't like her. God is saying, you got a spirit of bitterness. So God is saying, I'm getting ready to name some stuff in you. I want you to partner with me and hear what I'm saying. This is good to me. Y'all, thank you, Jesus. He said, <laughs> he said I need y'all to partner with me so y'all can hear what I'm saying. Because I'm leaning down to see if you get it. But guess what happened? It was after Adam did all of this stuff and named that then he was able to realize, wait a minute, none of these things look like me. I'm missing something. See, God sometimes don't just directly take and, you know, there's a lack in our lives. God don't directly just give it to you. He makes you partner with him, hear what he's saying, so that you can recognize what you need. So that you can recognize there's a need. Once you recognize the need, then he'll provide it for you. I just believe this year God is saying, I want some of y'all to start recognizing some need in you. I want you to start recognizing where there's lack in you. Because yeah, why you partner with me? Because see, it ain't, he wasn't somewhere sitting down being idle. He was partnering with God, naming the animals, and then he was able to see his lack. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Some of us, thank you, Jesus. I know I can speak for myself. Maybe all y'all just all perfect. Maybe it's just me. See, it was some lack in my places, lack in my thinking, lack in my faith walk that I didn't realize was there until I started to listen. Till I opened up my ear and God started to speak. Because when he started to speak and I began to hear some stuff. And I was like, okay, that right there is an orphan spirit. I've been calling it dropped. But now I realize that I wasn't just feeling dropped. I had an orphan spirit that was trying to keep me from stepping in and fully accepting everything from you. So once I let you deal with that lack, no longer did I have the orphan spirit. But now I know that I'm a son of God. So when I listened in and heard you. I was able to understand the place where I had a lack. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I hear the Lord also saying, I need you to listen. Because as you listen, I'm going to teach you how to rightly discern. We talk about holy partnerships this year. It's some folks right now to be all in your face like, oh, I'm really so glad you're, you're wanting to see God. No, they ain't. 
It's some folks right now that the enemy is talking. See, they listen, but they listen to the wrong voice. It's some people right now that the enemy is saying, you know what, I want you to try to trip that brother up. I want you to trip that sister up. This is how you're going to do it. Because I want you to get them off track. Because if you get them off track, then they won't hear me. They won't hear God rather. And when they won't hear God, then they'll miss what it is. And so we round there naming some folks that snakes, we naming them doves. You ain't no dove. I don't care how many times you sit in the church. Just like I said, you can be a car and you can't be no car. You know, just because you stand in the garage don't make you a car. Just because you sit in the church don't make you saved. I don't care if you've been sitting in the church 45 years and a day. It still don't matter if God has not got your life. And so there's some, there's some God's getting ready to open up our ability to see who really is for us. Who really is in his in, on your behalf? Who really is speaking truth over you? Who really do want to see you succeed? And some of the breakups, they're going to be a little hard. But guess what? You'll survive, especially when you see what you're going to get on the other side of it. Some of us need to give a lot, the old goodbye, my lot. Because as soon as you get rid of lot, then God going to show you what I had planned for you. He ain't just like he didn't give lot. Um, I mean, uh, Abraham, he didn't tell him what he was going to do until he left lot. Some of us got to get rid of nephew and, and cousin and all these other folks that just be following us. We need to cut self up so we can hear what God has for our future. God wants to teach you to be a better discerner in this year. To better understand what he is saying for you. And when we do that, when we name things right, he's going to send us a helper. Our helper is the Holy Ghost. When we start realizing there's some stuff in our life that's missing, he's going to send us some help. He said, you have a help, the paracletes, the helper, the Holy Ghost. He is here to help us. We just got to be willing to listen. So what is it for 2018? God is telling us that this is the year that he is going to do far greater than what we ever could expect. But it's also the year that you got to learn how to be fearless. You got to jump out of your comfort zone. And I don't mean try to, you know, ease out, take both feet and jump out of your comfort zone. If you've been designed to do a business, God to gave you the vision, and you find a reason why you're not doing it, don't, don't do that. Jump. And let me tell you something. Often the reason why we won't move it's because we're waiting for all of the plan. I'm going to tell you, I'm, and I'm going to give this to you for free. I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me. When I was going to publish one of my first books, and I was like, well, Lord, I don't got the money for it. And, you know, what is this, that, and the other? He told me, you don't need no money to publish it. You ain't even wrote it yet. He said, do your part. Stop trying to figure out what's going to happen at the end when you ain't even did your part. I said, oh, okay. Same thing as I'm preparing to launch now from printing, publishing the book. I'm getting ready now to launch my publishing company. And I said the same thing. I started on that. I'm like, well, Lord, I don't got no money. Ah, shut my mouth. I said, but you know what, Lord? Just like you have shown me everything else I needed to do, you will give me the wisdom to figure out how to do stuff that normally I would have to pay folks money to do that I can do it myself. I'm going to tell you, I'm blowing my own mind as I am creating my website and I've, I've created uh, my own module because one of the things that I'm going to do with my company is I actually have a school for my authors. I already totally built the online school. Tell me, tell me God won't give you the wisdom. And let me tell you how he did it. I went to bed and I'm like, well, how am I going to do that? As I went to sleep, Holy Ghost showed up as a technician in my dream, and he started to tell me stuff. So I'm having this conversation. I'm like, what? Well, I don't have access to that. He said, no, go right here. Google this. I mean, he told me step by step what to do. And I, you know, and it just is like, a, am I, even in my dream, I'm like, well, I don't have access. So when I woke up, I said, okay, Lord, that was you. I went and did exactly what he said. And it was like, well, you need a pro, and I, a pro website. I'm like, well, I don't think my website is pro. He said, go look at your website. My website said I was pro. I was like, oh, it took me five minutes to set up that stuff because I followed his instruction. What am I trying to tell you? I want each one of y'all to dream bigger than what you dream. Because I'm even telling you, the dream you got, too little, too small, it's too little. Expand it. You want that company? Think bigger than what you've been thinking. You just thinking I'm going to bake a couple of cookies and I'm going to do this. Think bigger. 
Who says that you can't open up a school to teach how to cook? Think bigger. See, your cookies is just a product. That's just one product. You got to think of how the other levels of you, because it's you that you really sell it. So what else do you have inside of you? Ask God to show you and blow your mind in what it is that you want. Whatever it is. Because I just believe we're coming to the season where we're just going to stop having a job. We're going to be entrepreneurs. We're going to build stuff. We're going to own stuff. Why? Because we God's children. The day of the Christian that's supposed to be broke, that ain't even biblical. That's just what we tell folks because it sound good. Oh, you just be poor. I don't see no scripture say I had to be poor. In fact, every scripture I see say my father owned everything. How does that work? I have a rich father, but I'm poor. That don't even make sense. If my father is rich, then I have access to richness. And I'm not talking about money for the sake of money. I'm talking about money for the sake of building so that I can invest it in somebody else. So that I can do something for the kingdom. So that I can do what he's called me to do. God is wanting to change our minds in 2018 about how we see ourselves and how we see him. Amen? Amen. I wrote this prayer. I'm going to just read it to you. That's the end of my message. I mean, that's my message. But I'm going to read this prayer, and then we, I'm going to pray for you. The prayer I wrote was, Lord, in 2018, we commit our works and plans to you. Let our thoughts be established according to your will. Like in Proverbs 16 and 3, it says, we commit our works to you, Lord, and we trust you, and you and your plans will succeed. Let your perfect will be done in our lives. Let us succeed in everything we do. Let our thoughts line up perfectly with your will and plans for our lives in 2018. Let us go where you want us to go. Meet those that you want us to meet and do what you want us to do. Help us in all of our ways to acknowledge you, Lord, and we will believe and trust that you will direct our path. Let our footsteps be ordered by you and let us walk in the plain path. We will know the plans you have for us in 2018. Plans for good and not evil. And we believe you will bring us to an expected end in 2018. We believe you will teach us to profit and lead us in the ways that we should go. That's my declaration over myself this year. I'm expecting God to do some stuff. And I'm not just expecting it all to be money-wise. I'm expecting to see greater things come from the church. I'm expecting to see greater growth in the people that I encounter. I'm expecting it. We all should expect it. Now, won't you stand with me? And what I'm asking you to make a decision today is, is that what you want? Do you want to make a decision that you no longer just kind of try to figure it out, but you're ready to say, okay, Lord, I'm jumping. I'm taking the leap, I'm taking the jump into what you want for my life. No, you don't have all of the answers, because that's not how God works. That's because if he told you everything, where would your faith be? Part of it is you just got to trust that what he says he'll do, he'll do. And if you don't know what he says, then it's, you got to trust to listen. And so if, if, if that's you, come so we can pray. <laughs> come so we can pray. Because your desire is...